asking why the president waited to let the American people know that he was sending in more troops after this week's midterm elections. Critics are crying foul about the timing. Joining us now for reaction, Illinois Senator Mark Kirk. Welcome, Senator. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me, Uma. Well, let me ask you, why do you think the president waited just days after the election to announce that he wants to send in more troops to Iraq when it's known that Iraqi battalions first asked our military leaders for that assistance back in September? He has timed almost everything to not affect the uh, midterm elections. You can imagine he was quite afraid what, what was going to happen in the elections. He didn't want anything to uh, upset the apple cart there. What would move the president to suggest that Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, and the U.S. had a shared interest against ISIS and that any cooperation fighting the terror group would con right. be contingent to Iran reaching a nuclear agreement by November right. 24th? I mean, we know, for instance, that Iran has mm -hmm. been complicit in the rise of ISIS. And we're talking about that secret letter that went out. Mm -hmm. I don't think the letter is going to lead to much. He has definitely turned into the appeaser in chief. Appeasement uh, in history has never really worked with uh, dictatorships or terrorist regimes. Isn't this letter another example of what critics would say is President Obama acting with a little regard for our allies as he tries to pursue right. this deal with Iran? Certainly it uh, would demoralize our Arab allies and our Israeli friends uh, quite a bit uh, if the, there's potentially uh, a lot of strategic cooperation. We all know that the Iranians really just want an atomic weapon. This condemns the next generation of Americans to, uh, to, uh, to witnessing a, 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 a nuclear war in the Middle East. The IAEA just came out with its yeah. own report yesterday saying that just weeks before the November 24th deadline, Iran has still not provided vital information about its suspected nuclear weapons right. research and explosive tests. Does the president really believe that Tehran is ready to stand down and set aside its nuclear ambitions? I think he's going to tell us that uh, the, the, the president is horribly misguided here. Passing love notes to uh, Khamenei is not going to really work on this uh, negotiation. We've got to understand that Iran was, that Iran was a, uh, certified as a terrorist nation. Uh, by Democratic or Republican the presidents for the last 30 years. They were right in the Iranians' uh, bad behavior. They're an exceedingly poor partner to work with, with, uh, with interests that are inimical to the United States. Well, you know, uh, even though the White House confirms that the letter went out, mm. National Security Advisor mm. Susan Rice is saying the U.S. is not trying to make a separate deal with Iran. Let's hear what she had to say this week. Uh, w with respect to... Uh, P potential presidential correspondence, I think you know that I'm not going to comment on any private communication between the president and any world leader. Um, but I will say this. Uh, first of all, the, as I've said repeatedly in public and, and others have too, we are in no way engaged in any coordination, uh, military coordination uh, with Iran on uh, countering ISIL. Senator Kirk, what's your reaction to her response? You know, seeing Susan Rice uh, running this policy really makes me uh, worry, given her uh, past record on uh, coming clean on uh, the national TV shows on Benghazi. I would say in this case, uh, we should uh, make sure we uh, treat our friends well and our allies the best and not deal so closely with Iran in such so, an so idealistic what's the, what's way. what's the Senate going to do about it now going forward? We've got, you know, a GOP control. Now that we Senate have a now, Senate, what are you, what uh, Republican do? Senate. Now that we have a Republican Senate coming in, uh, I think one of our first votes should be uh, on the bipartisan Menendez-Kirk sanctions on Iran, in which we'll get substantial Democratic support for, for that, especially what, with uh, Chuck Schumer of New York. What does that entail exactly? Mm. Would be uh, tougher sanctions that uh, led us to the position where we got 74% uh, of the Iranian currency uh, cut. That brought them to the table, as the president has told us over and over again. All right, I want to switch gears for just a moment. I have to, before I let you go, I want to ask you about the Supreme Court saying that it will hear the newest challenge to the law over tax subsidies in Obamacare. Your reaction first right. to that? In, in the case of the new Republican Senate, I think we will uh, not fund uh, some of the uh, parts of the uh, law that are particularly egregious, like uh, individual mandate or the IPAB rationing mechanism. And I think I would see... Uh, key positions uh, for uh, Obamacare is not being filled by the Senate. That, uh, that will relieve uh, that enormous wet blanket which the, uh, which the uh, ACA puts over the economy. 
if the uh, American public sees the AC not, is not going in full effect, a number of small businesses will start to hire again. All right, Senator Kirk, thank you so much for joining us today with your insights. Thank, Appreciate thank it. You.